Good morning, friends. Welcome back. We have another day of learning ahead of us, and it was kind of fun when I was planning for our story today. I started looking at all the charts that we've made, and we have done a lot of work. We might not be in the classroom, <clears throat> but we are sure doing a lot of important stuff. Look over here. So we've got character, setting, and plot over here. So that's gonna support our learning and practice for today because you can see that we're gonna work on story retelling. And when we tell, retell a story to somebody else, we work on setting, which is what we did right here. This one right here, where the story happens. We worked on character, we're gonna identify the characters. And so we looked at who the characters are and what they're like. And we have to tell what the problem, the happenings, and the solution are. And that's all part of the plot. And so we've worked on all of that stuff already. I'm so proud of you for watching all of these videos. I know Braden and Cadence have started watching. Xavier has been tuning in. Um, and many other people, Sebastian I know has tuned in and watched. The Hughes kids have been watching. And Grady and Reeve continue to watch. And so I'm so proud that I have so many people who are joining me every day for story time. Even if you don't have a printer at home and you're not able to print out the worksheets, it's still great to tune in and watch these videos because we're talking about things and you're doing the thinking that happens in these stories. So just tuning in and listening to that is, um, is fantastic. So thank you for coming all the time. I just absolutely love it. I was showing the story that I would be reading today called Martha Speaks when I first opened up this video. And it's kind of funny, we bought this when Guinevere was a baby, so she's 16 years old now. And when we bought, or we didn't buy this, we had a dog named Martha. And I'll show you what Martha looked like. This is a picture of Martha. And Martha has passed away now, but she was my good, good friend before we had babies. And here's a drawing of her. And so when we had Mar Guinevere, some friends of ours noticed that our Martha looks a little bit like the Martha in Martha Speaks. And so they actually gave this book to us when we had a baby. And so the dedication right there says, for Guinevere and Martha, love Samantha and Hallie. And Samantha and Hallie are probably in their 20s now. They're probably pretty grown up girls. Maybe they're even 28 years old. But uh, Martha passed away just right after Freddie was born. So my parents had a dog and they rescued a couple dogs and they ended up being pregnant. And so this little girl came into our lives just soon after Martha passed away. And it was really nice to have her come into our lives. So she's a schnauzer, but this is Freddie Sparkles. Freddie, Queen Freddie Sparkles, Zool Little John, because she's both a queen and she can be a little devil too. Zool is the bad guy from Ghostbusters, if you've ever watched that movie. Anyway, I'll get to the story now of Martha Speaks. And remember, as we go through the story, remember we're gonna come back to this at the end because we're gonna retell the story. And if you saw this little dot in here, once again, I'm reusing some of my scrapbook um, discard stuff. And so that's where there was a little hook that was going through the paper. So I would be curious about that if I were you. Martha Speaks. I hope that soup is gone when I come back in there. The lighting is having a tough time today. The sunshine is out so bright. Can you see these pictures very well? If I hold it closer. Hmm. Maybe I need to turn off some lights. Aha, there we go, that's much better. It was too bright. So there's the mother saying, you better eat that food. And so what does that kid do? I remember doing that sometimes. The day Helen gave Martha dog her alphabet soup. Something unusual happened. As you can see those letters going into Martha's brain. That evening, Martha spoke. Isn't it time for my dinner? Uh, uh, oh. 
Martha's family had many questions to ask her. Of course, she had a lot to tell them. Have you always understood what we're saying? You bet. Do you want to know what Benji is really saying? Why don't you come when we call you? You people are so bossy. Come, sit, stay. You never say please. What's all this nonsense about pit bulls? Day and night, this morning, I dreamed I was chasing a giant meatloaf. Do dogs dream? Why do you drink out of the toilet? Lassie isn't all that smart. Woof. Alphabet soup became a regular part of Martha's diet, and the family had a wonderful time surprising people. Walking the dog was always good for a laugh. Yo, Rinty, good dog. How's the flea problem? They ordered pizza from a different restaurant every night. How much do I owe you? They taught Martha how to use the phone, but this was a mistake. Hello, Acne Meat Company? I'd like to make an order. <laughs> That reminds me of when Alexa was first around and kids were ordering all kinds of things. Pretty soon, more than pizza was delivered. But I didn't order any barbecue. Family and friends were amazed. Please pass the carcass. Want to go for a walk, Granny? That would be pretty shocking to see a dog talk. Just to be clear, my Martha dog did not actually speak anything other than dog language. Although there were those who doubted, there's no such thing as a talking dog. Martha always had the last word. Speak, Martha. Woof. Just kidding. But there was a problem. Now that Martha could talk, there was no stopping her. She said exactly what was on her mind. Why is that man so fat? I don't think he appreciated hearing that. She made embarrassing comments. Mom said that fruitcake you sent wasn't fit for a dog, but I thought it was delicious. Oh my goodness. And she always told the truth. Who did it? And they're all pointing at each other. Helen did it. Occasionally she wondered why her family was often mad at her. But she kept on talking. She talked through everyone's favorite TV shows. I've seen this program. Want me to tell you what happens? The giant reptile did it and the little kitten gets blamed, but it's okay because Ninja Woman and Enviro Man team up to save the little kitten and of course, the world. Except her own. She did not talk through her own television shows. <laughs> She talked while they were trying to read. There's a poodle over on Circuit Street I'd really like to play with. He's a small, but what a dog. And speaking of small, I'm sure you're all curious about the early days of my life. She talked and talked and talked until her family couldn't stand it and said, Martha, please. I'm just going to count all this as the illustration. If you'd like to check this book out from the library or read it at school, you can read all that, but I'm not going to read all that right now. Shut up! Ooh, that was not very polite. What's wrong? asked Martha. You talk too much, yelled father. You never stop, yelled mother. Sometimes, said Helen, I wish you'd never learned to talk. Martha was crushed. Oh, well, if you have a dog and you've seen your dog make that face, that is the saddest thing in the whole wide world. The next day, Martha did not speak. She did not ask for her dinner or to go out. She offered no opinions, but lay quietly under the kitchen table. At first, her family enjoyed the silence, but after a while, they became worried. What's the matter, Martha? asked Helen. Martha didn't answer. Helen's father called the vet. There's something wrong with my dog, he said. She won't say a word. Is this some kind of joke? asked the vet. Helen offered Martha bowl after bowl of alphabet soup, but Martha had lost her appetite for letters. Oh, poor Martha. Have you ever felt like that? Like you're such a bother that you just want to disappear? I have felt like that before. But you know, sometimes we can be too much. But people still want us. They still love us. And they don't want us to go away 100%. Martha's family wondered if she would ever speak again. Then one evening, when her family was out, Martha heard the sound of glass breaking. A burglar, she gasped. I better call the police. She carefully dialed 911. 911, if you don't know, is the number that you call when there's something happening at your house, 
like your house is on fire or there's something unsafe happening and you need help or somebody gets hurt. But when she opened her mouth to speak, yip, arf, 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 woof. Martha hadn't eaten a bowl of alphabet soup in days. Martha raced to the kitchen. She barked. She growled. She tried to look ferocious. Arr. The burglar wasn't frightened. He picked up a pot from the stove. Uh-oh, thought Martha. It's taps for sure, but to her surprise, the burglar put the pot down on the floor in front of her. Here, doggy, he said. Have something nice to eat. Oh, he thought he was going to distract her. The burglar smiled as he closed Martha into the kitchen and went back to work. Dun, 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 dun. Dumb dog, he said. Lucky for me, you like alphabet soup. When Martha's family returned, they found the police removing the burglar from the house. How did you know he was robbing the house? asked Helen. We got a call at the station, said the officer. Some lady named Martha. Good dog, Martha, exclaimed her family happily. You're so right, said Martha. Now Martha eats a bowl of alphabet soup every day. She's learning what to say and when to say it, and sometimes she doesn't say anything all, at all for at least a few minutes. That's an important skill for everybody to learn. All right. So, uh oh, where'd I put my marker? Oh, dropped to the floor. <laughs> All right, so we're going to look at the story retelling now as we're thinking about this. And we're going to think about the important parts of our story. Sorry, I can only see when it's up close to my face. So, the setting where does this story happen? If we look at the pictures, we can see really easy where the story happens. And if you look at it, you see clues in here. You see lots of furniture and you see her family. And so this setting for this story is it happens at home. This story doesn't happen at a certain time. Like we've looked at stories that happen in the olden days. We've looked at stories that happen um, um, like at a certain time of the year, like at winter time. This time the story just happens, like this could be a story that happened today. And so I'm just gonna put any time. Any time that like we're alive. So this isn't something that happened at a specific time or the future or anything. The characters, well one of the main characters, or the main character, is Martha. Who else is the main character? Look at it. Who else would be a main character here? So if we look in the story, I see her family. Should we write family in there? I think we should. Her family. And then there is one other really important character that happens at the end. Who is that character? The robber. We could also write the neighbors and the policeman, and all of those people. We could write that in here, but these are the main people that help the story to move forward. What was the problem? The problem is illustrated right here, where she's talking a ton. And let's see, right here, where she's saying things she shouldn't. Oh my gosh, where she's talking through everybody's reading and movies, and she's talking and talking and talking. So what is the problem with Martha Speaks? If you're thinking that the problem is that she won't stop talking, I agree with you. She won't stop talking. In my class, we often talk about how frustrating it is if we're trying to watch a movie or something and there are people talking because we can't hear what's going on and we get distracted and we miss important things. I'm going to move my camera just a little bit. There we go. 
go. I'll move it back just a touch, and then I'll move it again in a minute. Happenings. The events that are happening at the beginning, middle, and end. So at the very beginning, what does she do? She eats a bowl of alphabet soup. She eats A, B, C, soup. And starts talking. And we can also say, in the middle, what does she do? She talks and talks and talks and talks and talks and bothers people. So she talks so much that she bothers others. I'm putting a period at the end of that one because that is a sentence. This one, eats ABC soup and starts talking, is not a sentence. It, it would be a sentence if it said she eats ABC soup and starts talking. This is just a fragment. She starts talking so much that she bothers others. So that's the middle. And what happens at the end? The climax of the story is when, think about it, what happens? A robber comes in. So at the end, a robber comes in. And after a couple of things happen, I'm not going to write everything because this is just a little bit about the story. And Martha calls the police. Ooh, that was like a D. So the solution is the very, 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 very end. Martha has to learn to do something, doesn't she? She's going to be a talking dog. She needs to learn a little bit of control, doesn't she? So the solution is Martha practices you know what, I'm gonna go back to the end of the book. I'm gonna reread that so I make sure that I understand what happened at the end. So the very last paragraph says, now Martha eats a bowl of alphabet soup every day. She's learning what to say, when to say it, and sometimes she doesn't say anything at all for a few, at least for a few minutes. And so I'm gonna say Martha practices when She should speak. For some reason, I almost feel like this story is talking to me because I can be a chatterbox. So what I want you to do is next time you do a little bit of reading, I want you to think about how you would retell your story. And if you have a parent who will listen or a brother or sister who will listen, I would like you to retell a little bit of your story to them. I wanna say thank you to you for coming today. I love meeting with you. I love sharing stories with you. And I love sharing lessons with you. And I love you. Yes, I'm talking about you. I'll see you soon.